Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the head witch behind Bahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about the new moon that's happening in the sign of Scorpio on November 7th, 2018. This new moon is one of those things that there's so much information that has been coming through. I don't know if it's because of the fact that the time that I meditated on this was around the time of Halloween where notoriously um, the veil between the spirit world and the physical world is very thin, but there was so much information that was coming through. As we're talking, please ignore the noise of the city. I'm also in New Orleans at the time of me making this and it's very loud here during this time. So my apologies for that. But that being said, hopefully it's not too much of a distraction so you can't actually grasp the message that I have here for you guys. So I really just want to dive into this as far as what it is that I see because I don't want to take any more time. It's wild because what I'm actually seeing is, this is crazy, but the image that I get is people taking, it's like tar or paint and they're painting their faces. And really what this is, is a symbolic metaphor for, I am entering into a space of my 100% raw, authentic self. I am holding nothing back. And when I look at this full moon, or I'm sorry, when I look at this new moon, I see the energy of quiet, like it's quiet. It's a very quiet vibration, but over time, throughout your meditation, throughout your ritual, that energy builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and increases. And I think that one thing that is so clear to me is that this new moon in the sign of Scorpio, and we'll talk about Scorpio, we'll talk about the details later, but I wanna give you guys my intuitive message first, my intuitive feeling, my intuitive hunches. This is about your personal power. And again, when we were doing astral live chat earlier this week on Monday, I kept on being drawn to the sacral chakra and the heart chakra and how all of that energy that's been lying dormant there is starting to build up and wants to express itself and wants to release. And that's creativity and that's your feeling, that's your heart, that's your vibe. And all of that comes from the divine. It's this divine connected energy. Now, I know that for many of you guys, this year has been really, really intense. It's been rubbing us the wrong way in a lot of ways, meaning like we're being kind of shaped and molded, which can feel uncomfortable and it can test our boundaries. It makes us sometimes second guess ourselves. It makes us kind of lose our faith, lose our hope. We have this vision that it is that we see for ourselves, but sometimes when it seems like over time it's obstacle after obstacle after obstacle, you're wondering, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? And once I get there, am I even going to like it? Is it even going to be worth it? Is this even going to come? Is this even going to happen? And what I'm, what I'm seeing is a few people kind of folding in within themselves or maybe still moving forward, but without that, that heart, without that spark, without that passion, without that creativity. And I, as I'm saying this, I realize how it even impacts me in my life where I had this new transition, this new, um, this new area that I'm in. And as I go into this new area, all of these things that have happened in order to get me to this point in this place in my life. And I'm realizing how much of, how many, how much of certain aspects of myself I have neglected. And those aspects were like, those traits, those tendencies were like little creative babies, little things that wanted to grow, that wanted to prosper, that, could thrive, but I just didn't, didn't give them their energy because my focus was on other things and how those um, aspects of myself, they didn't die, but they've been lying kind of dormant and they need to have attention again. They need to have energy focused on them in order to build them up. Now, for a lot of us, it's energy that's lying within us. It's things that we feel. And what I feel when I'm looking at this chart is like this kind of um, shaking, this kind of buildup of energy that's kind of trembling right now. And sometimes, again, it's emotion. Sometimes it's fear. But really what it is, is it's something is happening here. Something is trying to grow. Something is trying to blossom. Now, October is one of the months that kind of is nailing the coffin. Like no, you know, um, it's no coincidence that October is, you know, the sign this um, signals, you know, the, the end times as far as our year, as far as for witches and stuff. But October is the time of, of, of the dead and releasing and transformation and honoring those people and those living things that we had to release, we had to let go of, whether it be our ancestors, our family, certain aspects of ourselves and things that it is that we were hoping that would happen 
symbolically when it comes to nature and I'm all about following the signs of nature and following the planets and following the cosmos and taking their advice as far as what I need to do next symbolically when it come when it's when we look at nature October is the time when things start dying down or start preparing to die down and we're starting to harvest and we take some of that harvest and we give it to our ancestors, we give it to our spirit guides as an offering, as a thank you for providing for us because we know that as we move forward, times are gonna get darker, the sun is gonna spend less time out, things aren't gonna be growing as much and so many animals, including ourselves, are gonna go into hibernation mode. Now, all that to be said that as this new moon is happening in the sign of Scorpio, I have to acknowledge the fact that many aspects of ourselves or pieces of our lives, uh, pieces of our lives have died up until the point of October. Many of you guys have lost jobs, relationships were tested, you were tested, maybe you lost family family members or um, important people or things, but either way there was a loss. And with this new moon, it can really create and kind of trigger those thoughts and those feelings. And that's why I see some people kind of trembling in, in memory of what has been going on, in memory of what has happened. And the crazy thing is, is that all of these things that have happened to us, they shift, they make us change, they make us shift. And it's fingers crossed, it's for our highest and greatest good. And sometimes we don't realize the blessing of it in that moment because we're so vulnerable, we're so sad, we're so defeated, we're so frustrated. But other times, everything, when we look back at it in years from now or a month from now, we can look back and, and see, okay, this is why this happened. So this is why I, I feel like I'm getting this symbolic metaphor, this image of a woman taking her two fingers and putting it in the dirt. And this dirt is so symbolic because this dirt is the breakdown of all that has happened that is now fertile. And she paints her face because she has not given up. And that's what I'm seeing when I'm looking at this new moon in Scorpio. Scorpio is very passionate, it's very intense, but more than that, I want us to focus on the fact that it's very raw, it's a very authentic and real energy. It doesn't deal with anything superficial. It wants real, it wants lasting, it wants um, to connect, it wants to understand, it wants to interweave itself in the things that um, are connected to our destiny and to our soul's purpose and in order for us to be able to do that We have to release and let go of those tiny things those those insignificant insignificant things that may seem important to us now But the universe understands that they don't serve a purpose that's very superficial So this new moon I'm seeing a lot of you guys put put um during your ritual, at least work work with this energy in order to paint onto yourself this new warrior spirit. And again, when I say warrior spirit, I'm not saying that you go out and that you fight. It's it's warrior energy in the fact that you don't have to, you know, punch out. You can state clearly state and call into your life the things that it is that you want and that it is that you deserve because these are things that come from your heart and your soul and to ask for them is in a lot of ways it makes you very vulnerable because you're entering into a space of complete faith and trust in the universe so that's what I'm seeing here. I'm also seeing things kind of happen, happening faded, meaning like um, like a change, like the wheel, like the wheel kind of turns or the fortune, the, the good luck and the fortune kind of changes in ways that we wouldn't even understand, that we wouldn't even be able to predict. And that's why the night of the new moon, I want you guys to really be quiet and dormant and meditate and then the days to come, then set your intention, then speak it out or um, call in the things that it is that you want to come into your life, especially now that we've kind of released in the month of October. October was the signal that, you know, what these trying times, these things that have been going on um, for us, even though the internet is telling us we're going to manifest, it's going to be blossoming, it's going to be abundant. In reality, we're all, I was saying this, like you're being transformed, you're being pushed, you're being tested right now. And it's not going to be the easiest, but it's going to be worth it. So October kind of, you know, knocks the um, the coffin shut or nails the coffin shut. And November really is going to start to open that door, even though Venus and Mercury are going to be retrograde. But we'll talk about that in the next video. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. because um, And then you turn on notifications because you'll see that as well. I really want you guys also to stay open to the element of surprise. I want you to focus on money. I want you to focus on intimacy. Um, soulmates, be careful when it is that you're asking about soulmates. For a long time, 
for the majority of my life, when I set intention, I was asking for relationships that would come in that would teach me about myself and that would help me to evolve into the person that I am now because I knew that if I had the wounds that it was that I, um, that I carried in this life and from the lives before me that the next relationship, by the time I got in my 30s, because if you look at my chart, marriage and long lasting relationships aren't meant to last forever until once I pass 30, 31 years old, which is where I'm at now. But I knew that if I didn't go through these battles, if I didn't go through these experiences, then I wouldn't be able to receive the love of my life, my true love. So I was calling in my soulmate, not the soulmate that would be lasting forever, but the ones that would connect with my soul the most and teach me the most in a small amount of time. And once that relationship was over, I asked the universe to let me know so I could release it and move on to the next lesson. And that's ultimately what it is that I'm seeing here. Be very mindful about and conscious and aware and honest with yourself about what it is that you want to call in. Do you want to call in your soul's purpose? Because that's going to ask you, that's going to require a lot from you, which isn't a bad thing, but it's going to require you to do the work in order to accomplish, in order to achieve, in order to accumulate, in order to attract into your life what it is ultimately that it is that you want and desire to do. The same thing with relationships. So during this new moon, really sit with it. The other thing that I see is concentrating on your feelings and that means the good and the bad. And if you are feeling sad, it's okay for you in that moment to think about those things that are making you sad and build them up, build them up, build them up. Cry, release, let it go. Purge it out, release, because October, November, the beginning of November is the time for you to you know, put those, put the nail in the coffin, seal it shut, but you can't do that if you're holding on to those same old um, wounds, those old aches and those pains, those past memories. Also, keep in mind that you don't know all and the universe has so much in store for you. And with that being said, and with, with you knowing that, you have to really um, be conscious and aware that there's so much surprises that can happen to you and that will happen for you. And so much of you needs to be flexible and open to that. That's one thing that I'm seeing within this, um, within the chart is the need to be flexible with your heart, the need to be flexible with your intent when it revolves around money. And I'm also seeing many of you guys uh, almost self-examining and I don't know why that is I don't know why I'm feeling that by looking at the chart but it's almost like changing your appearance so that it's more and I'm feeling this for myself as well um, but changing your appearance so that it's more reflective of your soul and who you are to your core instead of feeling like you're painting or you know who you are on the outside it is not an actual portrayal of who you are internally and being bold in that and realizing that you know, people are not going to accept you in this way that you see yourself, and that is fine. You're not going to be, um, you know, gain the approval of everyone, but ultimately, as long as you're happy with yourself and you're satisfied with yourself and you're comfortable in your own skin, then that is all that matters. So I'm definitely seeing that. Jupiter is um, trying to divert the uh, North Node. The North Node is our North Star, which is pulling us in the direction of where it is that we need to go. The North Node in this case is falling in the sign of Cancer. And Cancer, again, connects to the emotion. So the key to the door that it is that you need to go through, again, is through your emotions and through your feelings. I actually wrote this down and I wanted to read it, read it out to you guys because I didn't want to miss anything, but when I'm doing my meditation, I'm preparing for these readings, I take some time to sit with myself and to reconnect with my guides, my ancestors, and I ask them to tell me what I need to tell you guys. What is it that you need to hear now, especially in regards to this new moon? And this is what they said, realize your power. Nothing takes that away from you, your power, um, unless you actually allow it and you even giving your power away is you owning your power, but you're just kind of transferring it. And I really want you guys to think about that, is that the internal power within you to call the shots, to set the intention, for you to make changes for your life, for you to call in into your life the things that is that you need, for you to be at the right place, or for you to go where you wanna go, all of those things that are things that come from your personal power. And if you decide out of fear or insecurity or immaturity that you want to give that power over to someone else, either way, that is you asserting your power and pushing it off onto someone else. And at that point, you are allowing someone else to, to, to take control of your life 
and who knows what can happen. So the best thing is for you to own and to step back into your power, again, your personal power, which is what um, the Scorpio new moon and the Scorpio energy is all about. It's about power, it's about control, and also relinquishing your control in a lot of ways. So meaning relinquishing your control to a higher power and knowing when to put your sword down, knowing when to pull back, and then also knowing when to come in and to dominate, because again, I'm seeing this warrior energy. Um, what I'm seeing too is this word, this sentence came through and says, what approaches you now grows. And I, I thought for a second, I said, well, what does this mean? And I looked at Jupiter. Jupiter is a planet of, a planet of abundance. So naturally, I'm going to look to see what's going on with Jupiter. And Jupiter is just going to be moving into the sign of Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is all about expanding your horizons, expanding your perspective, especially with Jupiter. Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Jupiter expands and blows up everything that is that it touches, but in a good way. And that's ultimately what it is that I'm seeing. I'm seeing Jupiter before, she, before he moves into the sign of of Sagittarius and as he moves into the sign of Sagittarius he has made one last aspect with Chiron the wounded healer sitting in the sign of um, Pisces which is again connecting to your soul purpose your reason for being here and um, compassion and sacrifice and forgiveness and then I'm also seeing um, Jupiter um, aspecting the North Node again our North Star where it is that we're being called to and the key in order to open the door to our destiny and again that's sitting in the sign of uh, Cancer, which is connecting to your feelings, nurturing yourself, security, being um, powerful, you know, owning your power. That's a thing that people don't realize about uh, cancer is how very powerful that sign is. And where does cancer pull its power from but from its emotion and from its feelings and from the vibe that it feels in its environment? Cancer will do, you know, whatever it takes in order to accomplish, to achieve its what is important to it and I'm seeing family, I'm seeing love, I'm seeing abundance, security, the home environment. Focus on building a home, a beautiful home. Focus on building a beautiful dynamic within your relationships. Focus on dating quality versus dating just, you know, insignificant for most people. Um, Jupiter, I'm sorry, Neptune also aspects this new moon, again, connecting us to our feelings and following our internal hunches. And the last thing I want you guys to be aware of is the fact that Pluto, the planet of transformation and power and control, is positively aspecting this new moon, the moon representing our emotions, the sun representing our ego, our our light, our vibrancy, our health, our well-being. So Pluto is pushing its power and pushing its um, support into this new moon, into the sign of this new moon. Um, Scorpio is co-ruled by the energy of Pluto. So Scorpio loves this as well and says, look, we need to push this. We need to build this. We need to channel and focus all of our, our intention and attention on our feelings, our sacral chakra, our heart chakra, speak it out into existence and also be di divinely connected with your soul purpose and be fearless in the pursuit of that. Um, the last thing that I saw is build, I can't even read my, oh, okay, I, I, I said build that fire with, within you, your desire, don't apologize for your desires, don't apologize for the things that you love, don't apologize for the things that your heart has been calling out for, especially during the new moon, re really connect with that. If you are looking at your life and something makes you sad because something is missing, Feel that feeling and call that in. Make that space empty. And then continue to live your life. Build, use your power in order to call it in. And that's what the high priestess does always is that she's the guardian, the protector of the unknown that doesn't have, that. there's no access to everyone. It's very secretive. Scorpio rules secrets. So what I'm seeing again is this power, this control being kind of dominated, asserted, said, called in because you are channeling and you're working with your feelings. So I'm seeing that. The other thing that I saw, and I, th I found this message so beautiful, and thank you to my angels and my guides for sharing it, but things can happen now because the energy is here and it's also limitless. Anything can happen. The energy is always limitless, but at this point at time, it's very raw, it's very authentic, it's very real, and that's what the energy is asking for you for this new moon. All right, my everyone, so thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys so much with all of my heart and my soul. I'm so honored and grateful for your support for me for the last year. It has been crazy. You guys see me manifesting all of this awesome opportunity. Meanwhile, 
you know, I love being able to serve you guys and it's just been an incredible journey. We're almost at the end of the year, but I see starting in November, just so many things are gonna be ch changing and opening up. I've already looked at November the year ahead, I'm sorry, the month ahead, and it looks to be really good, really prosperous, and a lot of good things happening, even with Mercury retrograde and Venus retrograde, but those are things that we can handle. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I'm gonna be posting a lot more about that, and I'll see you in my next video. Talk to you soon, bye.